psychic uh, tarot card reader, Reiki master uh, f from Germany. Hello, Heike. Hello, how are you? I'm mm. good, thank you. You've been in the country, though, in South Africa for a long time, so we won't call you German anymore. We'll call you South African. I've spent more time in South Africa than I've been in Germany, so yeah, I'm with you on that one. Okay. How was your Christmas? I was wonderful, loud and quiet. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. So, so I've, I've asked you now, I don't know what you're going to use, because you, you, you have so many titles. You're a medium, you're a psychic, you're a... So what, what, what are you going to use today to take us into 2017 and take a peek at it? It's, uh, it's a combination. It's, it's, I use uh, tarot cards and, and the psychic medium uh, part comes in automatically because it is the high consensus through um, or, which I'm um, also uh, receiving messages and input. So it's always going to be a combination. It's kind of like being switched on all the time. Okay, so 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 have you looked at your cards yet or are you going to yeah, do... they are right in front of me. I've just turned them out for the last like, two minutes or so and uh, it's all about 2017. It's all about 2017. Did you did you shuffle them properly? Did you knock on them first before you? I double and triple shuffle them. The thing is, you can't <laughs> you can't tell spirit what to do. They certainly have a mind on their own, and like universal energies and all of that. So it's for me to to read them and interpret them and uh, put them out to you. At the end of the day, what everybody does with it is always up to free will. Nothing ever overruns free will, and nothing is ever cast on stone. Okay. So, what what um, what do you see on the cards? Right, uh, there are lots of changes coming up. Uh, with, uh, also because we had to create a new platform for next year. This year was a uh, is still uh, a time of letting go, of of closing doors, of of getting out of habits, and so it was all about creating new platforms for 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 next year as well. Does not mean that it's going to be all smooth running. Some uh, industries like um, transport, communication, shipping, um, and, and property market is going to pick up again in the first half of the year, but it will still fluctuate. So lots of areas of businesses which took quite a knock this year will have a way more favorable start into the next year, where others will get a bit more of a hard time, like banking, engineering, computers. It's also linked to the elements that are more active in 2017. So businesses that were struggling are going to see a better year next year, you say? Yeah, there are specific areas, and as I said, like anything to do, like uh, the stock market as well is going to go up the first half of the year, which is going to be roughly the second half of the year again. So there is lots of new opportunities coming up, especially in those areas uh, of the industries which were really, really struggling uh, this year. What about our economy? Well, within the economy, that's what I'm saying. Uh, some of them will really pick up and others will find it even more difficult. Uh, so also due to the political stability that we have and even more changes uh, coming up there and with the interest rates and with uh, foreign currency exchange rates and all of it will still have a huge uh, impact on us. With that also, there's the shifting going on in Europe and America and so on with political stuff. This is going to uh, affect our economy here as well. Generally, it's going to look more up than it was this year, but it still takes a lot of work. So, so you know, I, I, when you say, it, it's, it's happening not only in South Africa, though, it's around yeah. the world, huh? Yeah, it's a worldwide shift. It's also running... Um, Parallel with the nine-year cycle we're going to, now this year, 2016, is a completion year. So it's literally like uh, out of the old uh, to make space for the new. It's all about finding new tools, new, way, new ways, uh, in, in order to get the next cycle uh, going as well. And it, it's literally, if you look, as you said, uh, worldwide as well, but politically what's happening, the industry, what's happening, and the security safety factor as well. Uh, all of that is going to be even more affected. So it's going to be a bit more unstable from kind of like conflict, uh, also disasters uh, um, regarding war, all of those stuff on an international level, which will obviously affect us accordingly on an economic um, part as well. Did you say there's war talk somewhere? Yeah, I, I definitely think that it's going to be, uh, it's going to be stepping up with, with uh, arms being more involved and uh, War seems coming up, but it's all more Europe-related uh, terror attacks as well, especially in the first half of the year. It, it's all about bringing out uh, the, the kind of fire energies as well, which uh, brings that with it as well. Can they be stopped? Well, 
other thing is whatever is happening at the moment is due to, to uh, the interconnected energy what we have created. Like anything out there is like what we put in, we get out. And that is kind of like the phoenix out of ash uh, space that we are going through, that it has to be the breakdown of many things before we can start again. It cannot completely uh, be uh, stopped, but it can obviously influence them how extreme it gets or not. So what can we do to... to kind of uh, make sure we're not affected as individuals. Well, but then it comes to, to uh, like when we talk about like the war and, and all this, uh, the, the criminal stuff being uh, more spiking and all of that, it, it's literally uh, what, what, as I said, with the free will, we just got to make sure we bring the right energy to the party because we fuel it. So if we're all going to go into a panic thing about it now and, and, and fuel hatred and fuel negativity and fuel the doomsday thinking, then we will just uh, escalate that even more automatically. Mm. So if, if I meditate more and I center myself more, um, that should make me conscious of my everyday attitude, my everyday um, uh, engagement with other people. Well, that, that, that whole thing always said, this is also a big shift where we are, where we need to get the energy from the outside back in, because we are still busy making sure that everybody else does what they're supposed to do. We have very big opinions Darling. on what's happening there, but we need to control our own energy and make sure we are as balanced as possible and bring the positive stuff in that with meditation, with uh, grounding, with all the boundaries. 2016 was a huge year of boundaries. If we don't know where we start and end, we don't know where the rest of the world starts and ends, it will lead to more clashes even. So it's taking responsibility for our own energy and what we bring to the party instead of pointing out there and expecting everything around us to change. Does it, is there a shift again to, to the kind of work that you do, that everybody is looking to, is, is, is going into a, a spiritual or needs to get to a spiritual space in Absolutely. order, to, in order to, you know, to, to, to live well? Firstly, but live well amongst other people because I and I spoke to my previous guest about this that, that the, the church as we know it, um, you know, seems to have its own challenges. People don't know what to believe in anymore. Um, so, and a lot of people are searching for an alternative because there's a lot of uh, suggestions about, you know, spiritual consciousness. Yes. So, so. Where do we go, though, and how do we know some of these things are real and some of them are, are you know, are, are, are the, the right thing to do? Okay. I think what's also what's happening here, where there is certainly more a search of, of a different kind of meaning of where our place is, how we fit into all of this, what we can hold on to, how we identify ourselves through. Um, and this is also literally that obviously we need to take our own power back and we need to learn to listen to our soul, to our gut feel, to our instincts, which is our soul directly speaking to us. And this is our true form, who we are. We as, an, we as people have learned that the brain overrules anything else and with that we think ourselves in corners. Uh, and we need to learn to put the brain and stuff in the line again, but the brain is there to help us take us uh, where, where, we, where the soul is leading us, but we are using it in order to question it. So this is where we need to turn inside, where we need to tune to our senses again, where we need to listen to our gut feel, to our intuition, which we all have, but we learn to, to shut it aside. When you said we tune into ourselves again, I, as we, we, we've forgotten how to do that. Yes. Is there, way, is there a way that we can learn it again, relearn to tune into ourselves? Absolutely. We've literally forgotten how to do it. Plus, it's also not really being taught because from day one, and like when kids are born, they've still got it so, so right. They'll, they'll go on instinct. they go like, if you ask kids, why did you do this or why did you do that? Because I felt like it. And that's the perfect explanation. And immediately, we teach them. It's like, that's not, that's not a reason. Why do we need a reason if we, if we are actually guided by, by, by soul? So then we, then we are being taught from school, that unless the brain agrees on it, it's not happening. So how we can tune back into it is we know when we go against our own feelings. We know when we convince ourselves to do stuff against our better knowledge, inner knowledge. And this is why we need to learn to listen to this again. Half of the things that we see as obstacles are due to actually overrunning the instinct, the gut feel that, uh, that we got in the first place. This is also why there is so many specific um, 
a spike and, and speak this physical disease is uh, happening again. It's the body warning us to say, just stop it, turn in, stop having it all outside. It's like this year, cancer was crazy. It's also all the tummy related stuff, because this is where we have the solar plexus, how we feel about ourselves how we, uh, as an individual and in comparison to the group we are at, to the society we are in, how do we identify? We need to bring the power back in. We outlaid all of that. Hmm. You know, it, uh, we, we really need to trust our instinct, really, that's, that's what you're saying. And, and, and I wonder, though, when you feel something and you trust what you feel, uh, it does not mean that the next person is feeling the same way, right? No, it doesn't mean that, but then it's, it's also uh, not everybody A, is feeling that way, and B, needs to feel that you all chose very different lessons and coexisting at the same time. And sometimes when we are doing things out of obligation or we want to make sure they're okay and then we are out of balance, we keep on creating imbalance. Anything and everything around you can only ever be as balanced as you are. Uh, energy is an inside-out shop. So, Heike, again, a, a lot of people are opening themselves up to the work that you do um, and some people are, are starting to use cards and trying to find their center where does one begin especially when you're using tarot cards where does one begin and how do we relate to them i mean you've been sitting there with the cards and they're giving you all this information i'm curious to say i wish you were sitting in front of me because i would have loved <laughs> I, would have lo that. <laughs> I would have loved to see you spread them you know and yeah. and, and and see your connection with 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 um your higher power and I know a lot of people are starting to use tarot. It, it, can you use them on their own, or do you need a special, a special guidance from someone like yourself? Well, we have different ways to get the tarot cards. Sometimes it's a very traditional way with the traditional card set, and, and then actually learn what each card means. But because each social journey is so different, it only really came up together for me once I chuck the book away and use different cards. So different people work differently on mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. But the number one thing that counts with any kind of social journey is you've got to trust your instincts. And this is kind of like your little feel like the game initially because you don't want to be looked at funny, you don't want to act out of it, you still want to be accepted. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's kind of like, yeah, my inner voice is telling me this. It always puts you out there that other people judge very quickly. Mm -hmm. and you're going to come to a point where you see but if I'm okay, everyone else will be okay. You just have to run with it and trust in that. I've never heard of anybody ever saying, I wish I would have not listened to my gut feel. It's always the other way around, ever, because it's your soul directly talking. It cannot mislead you. Heike, I, I wish you the best of 2017, and I, I thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and find my set of cards and see if I can uh, use them instinctively. And I'll let That's you, exactly it. And I'll let anything you, you draw into any type of deck of cards or if it's tangible, if it's changed, it doesn't matter. It's just a tool. Ultimately, you connect to yourself. Hmm. That's good to know. I'm going to, I'm going to invite you in so that we see how you do this uh, awesome. w w sometime in 2017. But, uh, um, danke schön. <laughs> <laughs> All the best for 2017. Thanks. Thanks to you. Thank you. Thanks, Ike. Thank you. Um,